good afternoon. My name is Matilde Fiore and I am uh, a PhD student uh, at the Von Karman Institute for Fluid Dynamics. Uh, today I will present you the development of uh, a data-driven turbulence model for uh, liquid metals and uh, its um, uh, application and uh, uh, validation in the open form uh, environment. Uh, the interest in liquid, liquid metals is great uh, due to the number of current and future applications involving these fluids. For example, the planetary research, the material processing industry, the development of liquid metal batteries and uh, of fast metal cooled nuclear reactors where these fluids are used as coolants to reach better efficiencies. In particular, the Belgian Nuclear Research Center is uh, working to design the Mira nuclear installation. The Mira reactor is uh, a research fast reactor cooled by LB that will be used for a variety of applications and especially for the radiotoxic waste transmutation that uh, will reduce the waste lifespan by 10 or even 100 times. Yeah. Uh, it's switched on. I think it was more a matter of preventing. Ah, okay, maybe. Um, so, uh, the um, uh, numerical investigations of, uh, of these flows is uh, very important for a good design. However, uh, the computational domains involved are usually uh, too complex and too wide to go for DNS or LES. Nowadays, the RANS approach still remains the only physical appro feasible approach for this kind of flows. The Reynolds averaging brings out two additional terms in the momentum and energy equations, which are the turbulent heat flux and the Reynolds stress tensor. In particular, the modeling of the turbulent heat flux is critical in presence of heavy liquid metals. Indeed, uh, the um, uh, liquid metals are characterized by very low Prandtl numbers, which um, tend to break out the similarity between uh, uh, thermal and velocity fields at the basis of most of the thermal turbulence closures. At low Prandtl numbers, the thermal boundary layer becomes thicker than the velocity one, and the thermal coherent structures uh, becomes larger than the momentum one. The limitations of traditional modeling approaches led to several uh, European collaborative projects uh, as uh, CESAM and NIST aimed at gaining insight about uh, liquid metal flows and uh, improve the modeling for this class of fluids. In the framework of these projects, high fidelity simulations of canonical flows at several Prandtl numbers were carried out and also uh, some uh, thermal models for low Prandtl numbers uh, were developed. Some of them are based on new correlations for the turbulent Prandtl number. Uh, other ones on uh, one of two uh, equations models for the thermal statistics. And also we had some algebraic uh, closures for the turbulent flux. The validation of these uh, low Prandtl number closures is still ongoing. And the uh, research group I'm working with is involved in this uh, validation process. And that's why we implemented uh, in uh, open form most of these thermal models uh, to Excuse test. Uh, me, could yeah. you please pick up the microphone again? It's because I cannot uh, see any difference. Yeah. Yeah. No, but for the online audience, it's, really it's better. Now. Okay. Okay. It's. Um, um, to test them for a variety of flow configurations and, uh, and conditions. On the other hand, we would, we would like also to exploit the enormous amount of information given by this collected data by generating data-driven model for the turbulent heat flux. 
to do so, we um, followed the approach presented in this slide, the mathematical structure of the model and its uh, uh, functional parameters were defined by applying a physical and mathematical arguments. Then a neural network model was constructed and trained with the available DNS data. And then the model was validated against uh, academic and industrial flow problems. Uh, the model developed is purely algebraic with the heat flux given by the product of a dispersion tensor D with the mean temperature gradient. The, this dispersion tensor uh, D is written as the sum of uh, a symmetric positive definite part plus a skew symmetric part to be consistent with the second law of thermodynamics. In turn, these two tensors, A and uh, W, are written as finite expansion series of tensors to satisfy the property of uh, invariance under rotation. Uh, the, um, uh, in particular, tensor representation theory uh, allows to reduce the parameter space to a finite number of tensors and scalars indicated in this table. The unclosed model coefficients uh, are uh, general functions of the scalar quantities indicated in the first column of this table. These coefficients are predicted by the artificial neural network developed in PyTorch. The network has two input layers, one for the um, scalar quantities that we denote as PI and one for the molecular Prandtl number. Then eight hidden layer follows and uh, the um, two branches merge through a multiplication of the outputs in the final uh, layer. The network was trained with the part of the data that uh, I presented in the previous slide, while the rest uh, was used for the validation. The training database is characterized by uh, non-isothermal turbulent channel flows for Prandtl numbers ranging from 0.01 to 0.71, uh, a turbulent boundary layer flow uh, at Prandtl number of 0.2 and 0.71, and the backward facing step flow at Prandtl number of 0.1. The network was trained several times with a different number of uh, neurons in each hidden layer to finally end up with an optimal value of 100 units in each uh, layer. After the training, the model had to be implemented in OpenFOAM for the validation. So first, the model was converted from PyTorch to TensorFlow, passing through an ONNX version. Then the model was saved in a proto buffer format, the .pb file. This is read by the TensorFlow C++ API uh, that was linked to the thermophysical transport models uh, library in OpenFOAM 8. So during the simulation, the network gives online uh, heat flux predictions that are then passed to the solver before uh, integrating the energy equation. Note that uh, the, ten, the um, uh, neural network was implemented in OpenFOAM with frozen parameters. As we already trained the model in the offline in Python, this frozen training approach can be a limit for the practical applicability of the data-driven formulation uh, due to, the, to a partial inconsistency between uh, uh, DNS and runs quantities uh, to problems related to the mesh sensitivity and also due to the coupling with other turbulence uh, closures uh, and submodels. The first validation benchmark is uh, a non-isothermal turbulent channel flow at several Reynolds and Prandtl numbers. To, um, to simulate this flow with the data-driven model for the heat flux, we should combine another closure for the momentum, of course. Uh, we choose two different closures, the um, lounder sharma k epsilon model that uh, is uh, based on the eddy um, viscosity approach and the Businesque approximation, and the elliptic blending Reynolds stress model that provides a very accurate representation of the Reynolds stresses. To prevent the unrealistic uh, behavior of the model uh, in the vanishing gradient region close to the channel center line, the predictions of the tensors are uh, 
uh, a posteriori corrected to limit its magnitude. This is uh, equivalent to limit the uh, minimum value of the turbulent Prandtl number, basically. In this slide, I show you the results obtained with the elliptic blending Reynolds stress model for the momentum and the heat flux, uh, the data-driven model for the heat flux. You can see that uh, even if the network was trained for the um, maximum friction Reynolds number of 640, it is able to extrapolate at higher Reynolds numbers. For example, here Reynolds tau equal to 2000. These generalization properties are extremely important uh, since we expect that uh, most of the applications involve much higher Reynolds numbers than those covered by this uh, training database. Also for uh, uh, a friction Reynolds number of 400, uh, we compare the performance of the neural network with the ones uh, uh, achieved with other models, the Manservis and Meneghini model, the Chi's correlation and algebraic heat flux model of Shams. Uh, we can see that the neural network is the highest accurate model among the one uh, indicated here when it is combined with the elliptic blending model for the momentum. Um, this is a promising result showing that uh, this approach can can be effectively used to generate new closures that compare well with the analytical ones. On the other hand, uh, when the model is coupled with the um, uh, lander schermach epsilon model, the comparison dramatically gets worse, uh, and uh, the neural network model is the least accurate uh, uh, model among the ones considered here. This is a consequence, I, as I was saying before, this is a consequence of the training using high fidelity data only, uh, since uh, it produces a high sensitivity of the model to the accuracy of the Reynolds stresses. So the robustness of this, uh, um, uh, this the, the developed formulation must be increased to extend the applicability to less expensive momentum models. The second validation test case was uh, uh, an unisothermal backward-facing step flow that was uh, already simulated by other et al. with uh, direct numerical simulation. For this test case, the momentum field was not solved, but uh, uh, directly mapped from the corresponding DNS uh, data. Uh, and uh, the, um, so we are doing just a thermal simulation in this case. Uh, the, um, Results obtained with the data-driven model were compared with uh, the ones obtained with the Chi's correlation and the algebraic heat flux model of Shams. Here we have the um, uh, heat, the predictions of the streamwise heat flux for Prandtl numbers of 0 0.1 and 0 0.005. Uh, you can see that. Uh, uh, the network was trained for this uh, uh, flow configuration just for a uh, Prandtl number of 0 0.1. Uh, however, it is, it is able to, uh, um, it gives predictions that are, that are in good agreement uh, with the DNS data also for the lowest value of the Prandtl number. Uh, when we compare the predictions with uh, the ones obtained with the, um, uh, the other models, uh, we can see that the neural network gives uh, uh, quite accurate values of the, the streamwise heat flux. Uh, more, it's more accurate than the algebraic heat flux model and much more than the Chi's correlation for which the streamwise heat flux is practically nil. For, for the distribution of the whole normal heat flux, we can do similar considerations. Uh, at the um, uh, Prandtl number of 0 0.1, the neural network tends to uh, overestimate the heat flux far from the attachment point. Uh, but for Prandtl number of 0 0.05, the results are in a better agreement with the DNS. This behavior can be explained by the different uh, influence of the uh, separation and recirculation region that we have in the two cases. Uh, at Prandtl number of 0 0.1, the, um, this region affects more the heat flux distribution because thermal and momentum timescales are uh, more uh, similar. 
Uh, so we have uh, here a um, very high heat flux peak uh, close to the discontinuity, but this abrupt flow evolution is difficult to be captured by an algebraic model. Uh, if we uh, see the comparison with the other uh, thermal models, uh, we can see that the neural network compares well with, uh, with the other models. Uh, just uh, close to the upper wall, the network uh, gives uh, uh, slightly uh, over underpredicted values of the heat flux. Um, as regards the uh, temperature distribution, uh, the considerations are in agreement with the previous slides. The network uh, predicts better the temperature field at uh, Prandtl number of 0 0.005 than for Prandtl number of 0 0.1. And uh, if we look at the temperature profile, uh, we can see that uh, the uh, temperature field is in a good agreement with the DNS, um, except uh, very close to the upper wall where the temperature is slightly uh, underpredicted due to in agreement with the underpredicted heat flux that we have seen in the previous uh, slide. The last uh, benchmark is uh, uh, a non-isothermal flow through um, vertical roads arranged in bundles. Uh, this flow is a typical benchmark in nuclear engineering uh, since uh, uh, to study the heat transfer through um, fu nuclear fuel assemblies. Uh, in the, for this test case, uh, we used uh, the elliptic blending model as a momentum turbulence model, uh, the data-driven model for uh, acid flux model, and uh, uh, K -theta, two different K-theta epsilon theta models uh, to compute the other turbulent, thermal turbulence statistics. In these slides, you see the heat flux uh, distributions along the, um, the borders of a unitary flow cell. Uh, you can see that the results vary a lot depending on the um, uh, thermal turbulence closure applied and also uh, to the submodel used to compute K-theta and Epsilon-theta. Uh, you can see that we have two uh, neural network uh, models. One it is coupled with the K-theta model of Manservisi and the other one with the K-theta model of Shams. This variability can be uh, better appreciated in these heat flux contours. Uh, in particular, the differential heat flux model and the algebraic uh, model give uh, the um, uh, highest heat flux predictions, while the Manservisi model and the uh, uh, artificial neural network coupled with the same K-theta model give the lowest uh, values. The uh, temperature distribution along the border of the unitary uh, flow cell uh, shows that uh, uh, all the thermal models tend to uh, overestimate the effective temperature gap. And uh, the values of the Nussel number indicated in this table show that uh, uh, the uh, most accurate models for this flow are the um, algebraic heat flux model uh, of Shams and the artificial neural network coupled with the same K-theta model. So uh, these uh, uh, test cases developed in OpenFOAM uh, are uh, able to show the, both the performance and the limitations of the, this data-driven method. Uh, the, the developed model is able to predict uh, uh, the heat flux in a, um, uh, for a category of flow configurations and uh, in a wide range of Prandtl numbers. The model generalizes quite well and it is able to extrapolate uh, relatively far from the conditions that we improve, that we uh, covered by the training with the training data set. On the other hand, the frozen training strategy leads to quite different results in the a priori and a posteriori validation. In particular, the coupling with the uh, complementary turbulence models and also the feedback loop on the temperature introduces uh, uh, uncertainties um, in, the, in the model predictions. Clearly, uh, integrating the 
training into the CFD software will improve the, the situation because uh, uh, in this way we will take into account the link with the, all the equations and some models uh, um, while we are training the network. Uh, efforts were already uh, done on this regard. For example, uh, um, the Argon National Lab developed uh, a Python form and the TensorFlow form to do, to do so. Uh, but uh, the uh, computational and memory requirements of these uh, approaches and also its uh, effectiveness uh, has still to be investigated in detail. I thank you for your uh, attention and if you have questions, uh, feel free to ask. Okay. Uh, what do you? Okay, I I repeat the the question. Uh, it's uh, the question is uh, uh, to comment uh, about the training region I used for the for the uh, training. But what do you mean for training region? The configuration or? Yes. Yes. In fact, uh, uh, for for example, for the channel flow, I, I come back to this slide. Okay. Uh, in this case, for the channel flows, um, what I did was using all the data for some Prandtl numbers uh, as training data and other simulations as validation. So I didn't uh, uh, split the, the, um, um, the domain uh, for these cases. And the same for the turbulent boundary layer. But for example, for the backward facing step, I um, split the domain into rectangular partitions. And I took some of them for as uh, training data and some of them uh, as validation data. Uh, this I this I don't know. Uh, the um, uh, which is the uncertainty of um, of the model with respect to the choice of the training regions. This I I never checked. I must admit. But uh, maybe I I tried to uh, define the training database in a way that uh, in a clever way such that uh, the network uh, is not forced to extrapolate too much. Uh, uh, when it is applied, but uh, I never check that. Thank you. Yes. Wolf functions. Ah, the loss. No, no, I didn't present it. It it was a combination of the mean square error, the heat flux. Uh, uh, minus the heat flux given by the reference data. And uh, there was also an additional term that uh, uh, took into account the difference between the uh, special derivatives of the heat flux minus the um, reference special deriva derivatives. Because it was very important to preserve the smoothness uh, of, the, of the field as uh, in the energy equation, you can see that uh, you have uh, the um, divergence of the heat flux. So if you have uh, an uh, oscillation uh, in, the, in the prediction is, uh, is not good. Thanks. Yes. Yeah. Yes, okay. Uh, the, um, the question was which is the um, which are the inputs and outputs of the of the neural network model. Um, the, um, the inputs are these scalar quantities plus the molecular prandtl number. These scalar quantities are not uh, uh, are 
taken from the application of the tensor representation theory that for a set, entire set of parameters that include scalars, vectors, tensors, they uh, reduce, uh, it, it is able to reduce them to the minimum independent scalar set because to, uh, to be consistent with the invariance and the rotation, these functions must be isotropic. So uh, the coefficients uh, can be only functions of uh, the scalar quantities. That's why we applied this, uh, this kind of technique. And uh, the output, uh, uh, you can see that uh, after the uh, these hidden layers and uh, the output layer, um, the model computes the two tensors, then it is computed the dispersion tensor. The dispersion tensor is multiplied with the gradient and, uh, and the heat flux is the output in a way, but on the other hand, it's uh, the coefficients are the output. Yes. Yes. Uh, will you make these developments public at some point in the future? This I, I cannot answer because uh, it depends. Uh, for the moment, I don't think so because it's still under development. Uh, and uh, since these, uh, uh, the objective of this work is to apply it for some uh, um, simulations uh, for industrial purposes, I, I, I don't know if that, uh, that could become public at some point. Ah. Did you face any stability with the elliptic blending model? Yes, a lot of instabilities. And in fact, in some uh, cases, it will, uh, it will simply do, do, do not converge. If yes, how did you stabilize the simulation? To stabilize, there is, from my experience, uh, not much that you can do. You can... Uh, try to uh, act a bit on the relaxation factor and uh, uh, you have to be very careful on the parameters of the closure parameters of the elliptic blending because even very small um, variations can lead to an instable behavior. But uh, for, um, for some cases, there is nothing you can do, I, I would say. Thanks a lot. So hello everyone. My name is Pipinder, and uh, today I'm going to present the uh, integration of open form with uh, TensorFlow for a generalized data-free learning. And my co-authors are Dr. Stephen Beal and Dr. John Farrow. Starting with the presentation, the first question comes: We need to answer is what's machine learning? So basically, in the context of neural networks, the machine learning is you put some, you have some input to the neural network. Then you have an output, Y cap. You feed that output to some loss function. That loss function generates a feedback and you train your neural network from that. And the most common type of training is the data-driven training where you have some predicted value and then you have some true value. And uh, you have some sort of a distance function which is mean square error or means absolute error. And you calculate your error from there. And then you use that error as a feedback to train your neural network. So uh, the most common problem with the data-driven learning is that sometimes training the generating the training data can be expensive. And uh, also the accuracy of the trained neural network depends highly depends on the fidelity of the data. And also the data can get corrupted. For example, if you are doing some experiments and some of the probes didn't record anything, so you, you are left with some patchy data that has some instances and you can't use it to train your neural network for the whole flow field. So uh, the data-free or unsupervised learning answers some of these questions. In context of uh, fluid mechanics or general physics sense, the unsupervised learning is also called physics-based learning or physics-informed learning. Uh, to understand the physics-informed learning, uh, we will just consider a simple example of mass oscillator. Uh, here you can see the equation two gives the physics for uh, a mass oscillator. And uh, in this case, the neural network has an input of X, which is the position of your mass oscillator. And the output is the velocity, which is your cap. And then you feed that output into your physics 
which is uh, the equation two. And then this equation is used to generate the feedback for your neural network. And the most common method to generate this feedback is uh, like the most common method to gen calculate these derivatives is automatic differentiation. And automatic differentiation has some drawbacks of its own. Uh, for example, it's not very ideal for stiff formulation, which we commonly encountered in our, in our CFD problems, or uh, when the equations are highly coupled as, as commonly observed in CFD. And also for complex geometry, sometimes the neural network doesn't converge because fluxes are not, con fluxes are not con conserved and you have to divide that into some sim simple geometries in order to get your answer. So uh, we, we tend to try to find the solution in the form of discretization in place of automatic differentiation. So uh, we use discretization as a method to calculate the derivatives. So why, why would you use a discretized loss function? Because discretized loss fun discretization has been around for too long and uh, uh, the main cornerstone of this is the flux conservation. And uh, basically the finite volume methods are based on flux conservation, uh, conservation and uh, they have been around for years and have been developed, high, have been highly researched. And uh, so the one problem is that there is uh, no, no flux, the flux is conserved. And also you have a very large number of discretization schemes, which you can use for any specific problem at hand and uh, get away with and get the high accuracy. And also the discretization is compatible with the current CFD solvers and you can easily uh, integrate your discretized loss functions into the current CFD solvers. Equation three shows a simple discretized loss function where uh, phi p and phi, where phi is the predicted value and uh, the loss LP is calculated just by the imbalances in the terms of the discretized equation. And figure one shows the schematic of a neural network that is being trained by a discretized loss function. You have some input to the neural network that can be anything, that can be a velocity field, that can be your uh, uh, special X, Y, Z axis. And then you have some output, which is phi. And then you feed that output into your array of discretized loss functions and then get the feedback and train the neural network for uh, predicting uh, flow at unseen boundary conditions that were not presented during the training training uh, process. And uh, how do we integrate these source functions into open form? Uh, in this study, we are using uh, Python C API. And uh, the main reason for using that is because the TensorFlow runs in Python and uh, we, we run the TensorFlow in eager mode the configuration and that only is possible in Python until now. And uh, this, the diagram figure two shows uh, how these two are integrated. At the bottom of figure two, you have open form, which is running the simple iteration. And uh, in simple iteration, you solve various equations such as velocity or uh, Poisson's equation or a simple energy equation. You can sort of modulate them. And uh, after, when you're running your uh, simple loop, you sort of, uh, export the discretization coefficients to TensorFlow through Python C APIs. And the TensorFlow is running a neural network which has an input and an output. The output is the desired solution to our discretized equation. And then uh, that output is fed into the physics-based loss function. The physics-based loss is generated and the feedback is provided to the neural network for correcting its prediction for the next iteration. And that iteration, iterative process runs similar to a simple loop, which we commonly run in open form. Uh, so why are we integrating this to open form? Why not we creating a so entire solver in Python? And the main reason for that is to offload some of the coding work. As you can see at the bottom, uh, if, if it is entirely Python based, the ML code and CFD code has to be coded uh, manually and uh, that will generate a lot of coding effort. You have to accurately code the CFD code as well. I, I know I'm, currently there are some Python based uh, programs 
possible and we are exploring them. And uh, if you integrate OpenFOAM with the uh, TensorFlow, you only have to focus on the ML code and the uh, effort to code the uh, CFD is offloaded to OpenFOAM, which is already an established solver and validated for various number of problems. And also interlinking OpenFOAM with the uh, TensorFlow results in uh, enables us to rapidly change the geometry, governing equations, and CFD algorithms. So basically, we can simulate anything that can be simulated with OpenFOAM alone and uh, train a neural network based on that uh, using a data-free or uh, physics-based machine learning. And, and also, if you are not coding CFD, you can focus more on ML algorithms and their accuracy if you're confident about your CFD accuracy, which we are in this case because of highly validated nature of OpenFOAM. So uh, we can use this uh, platform to simulate various flows. In this presentation, I'm only going to show the RANS closure model, which is uh, which we which we use to predict uh, the eddy viscosity for a, a backward facing step. In this case, uh, the loss function is Flaret Almara's closure model. The Output of the neural network is eddy viscosity and input is the potential velocity, which is uh, available at the start of our simulation. And uh, the eddy viscosity is then fed into the Splanet Almaras, discretized Splanet Almaras, and uh, that loss is uh, used to train the neural network. And uh, as you can see, the bottom three figures, figure three and figure four, are showing the comparison of uh, CFD solver versus NM solver. The basically, the bottom of figure three shows the prediction by a neural network, which is trained using the discretized loss function. And the up, uh, top half is the CFD, uh, CFD solution. You can see that they are both comparable. Uh, and figure four further compares the accuracy where we sort of, where we compare it at different uh, Reynolds number, ranging from 30,000 to 35,000, and we are, increasing that range as we as the work progresses and uh, these are at probe location p1 and p2 the upper row shows the values at p1 and the bottom row shows the values at the p2 the red line is for nn solvers and the black dotted line is for cfd solvers you can see that the results are agreeing to high level of accuracy and uh, so why, why do we need uh, to integrate machine learning into open form? So from our initial studies, we found that uh, if we predict the neural eddy viscosity by using neural networks, uh, the solution and the time to convergence is less as compared to using entirely CFD-based solvers. Uh, for example, at different channels number, we are getting the speed ups up to six or seven times. One of the main factor is uh, the um, residuals for NN-based solvers are decreasing uh, at a faster rate as compared to the CFD solvers. And, uh, and another contributing factors are that uh, we are circumventing the solution of, uh, we are circumventing the solution of one uh, partial differential equation that is plot Almaras in this case into a reduced order model of a neural network, which is uh, efficient computationally. And uh, another application of this uh, physics-based learning is uh, hybrid training, where you can combine the physics-based loss function with data-driven techniques to train the neural network from sparse, erroneous, or patchy data, which is, uh, which is a common occurrence in experimental or computational fluid dynamics. Uh, for example, let's consider the figure A. Uh, the black line shows the ground truth. The dotted orange, la orange dots are the available data. And the green line is the fit that we get by using only data-driven loss function. Uh, as you can see that uh, due to sparse nature of data, we are just missing the small scale oscillations here. And this can be, in this case, the physics-based loss function can uh, be handy. If you can patch your data-driven model at orange lines, uh, orange dots with the blue dots of the physics-based loss function, 
we can train a neural network accurately from a very sparse data. And uh, the figure B is another case of uh, figure A, where the data is uh, sparse at some certain location. And this can be due to some faulty sensors in our experiment or just an uh, uh, course mesh or any anything. So uh, the orange dots are the available data and the blue dots are the physics based loss function. And uh, figure C sort of uh, gives you an idea of this principle on 2D domain. The green areas of a 2D domain are the points where data is available and uh, red, uh, red patches are where data is not available. So uh, at green, we can use the data driven loss function and at uh, red, we can use the uh, uh, physics based loss function and patch those learnings together to create a accumulated loss function. So we can train a neural network accurately from uh, partial data. Uh, so what is the schematic of this hybrid learning? The bottom half of this figure seven is similar to the earlier fully physics based loss function. But uh, at top half, the prediction from the neural network is divided into two parts. One where the data is available, another where data is not available. So where the data is available, those outputs are fed into a supervised loss function. And another where data is not available are fed to the physics based loss function. And then they are combined together to form our feedback for your neural network. The test case, for the hypothetical test case for this is a, a backward facing step where we are missing the ID viscosity data for uh, set in certain patches. This is not a common occurrence in CFD, uh, but can be observed in experiments. But, but in this case, we are only using the CFD to sort of have a proof of concept of this method. And now the table two shows the training speed of hybrid versus fully unsupervised learning. The first row, first column of table two is the amount of training data that is missing. And uh, that ranges from 20% to 40% to 70% to 100% where it is a fully unsupervised learning. So you can see that, uh, that for 20%, the hybrid learning is five times faster than uh, the fully physics-based loss function. So uh, we can see that the hybrid learning is able to gain some information from any partial available data and sort of uh, translate into the acceleration in training. And uh, even at 70% of data missing, we can uh, have the speed up of 1.47 times. And uh, if even if, if, if it was only a fully data-driven loss function, we would have discarded this data because uh, because some part of the data is missing and we can't use it in a fully data-driven loss function. And uh, the entire effort to generate that, uh, that data would have been wasted, even though the, some part of that data can be useful. Uh, figure nine shows the residual plots of the training of unsupervised learning and hybrid learning. As you can see that the residual for 20% data is decreasing at a faster rate as compared to a fully unsupervised learning and that rate sort of increases as we go on increasing the uh, fraction of missing data. So at current point uh, in this research, we have a, a fully functioning data free discretization loss function. And we have proof of concept of our uh, data, data recovery and hybrid trainings. And uh, the simulation speed up are there and that can be explored further. And the future work involved is to study this methodology in complex geometries and uh, erroneous data. For example, instead of patchy data, you have some erroneous data, uh, which can be due to some use of some wrong model or some wrong size of mesh. Uh, we'll, we, we can use that to extract some of that information and uh, translate into acceleration of our training. And another uh, work is the patch-based learning for the scalability of the neural networks. Until now, the neural networks uh, are scaled, uh, in this study, the neural network are scaled with uh, the size of mesh, which is uh, which, which results in a lot of scalability issues. 
And so we are looking at patch based training where the size dependence of neural network can be on, on the size of mesh can be reduced and uh, a highly efficient data, a highly efficient uh, models can be obtained. Uh, some of that part uh, research has been published in uh, the journal, Physics of Fluids. And uh, also this is based on the previous work of uh, the MR of uh, from the last year's open form conference where uh, it was used for the linear elastic solvers and in this we in this presentation we sort of ex uh, extended that to the coupled partial differential equations with this i would like to end my presentation uh, thank you for listening feel free to have any ask any questions if you have any thank you Right, are there any questions from the audience? Okay, there is uh, one question in the Zoom chat, uh, which I would have also asked. Um, can, can you see the chat message? Uh, or should I repeat it? So the question is, yes. if this works in parallel? Uh, yes, it does work in parallel. And uh, we we have tested it. Uh, like right now, I have a limited computational power. I have only tested it up to eight parallel cores, but uh, yes, it it works. All right, thank you. Um, any further questions from the online audience or the audience here? I think everybody uh, here is fighting a little bit with the temperature. If I look into the faces of everybody. Okay, there's one more question maybe in the chat. Uh, I'm not able to read it there. Oh no, I think that's it actually. Yeah. Okay, so there's uh, one more question here. Maybe. So actually, you saw it was uh, some speed ups uh, when uh, selecting uh, only part of the domain on the supervised uh, training. But did you also yeah. check, uh, let's say, if there were any important changes in the uh, solution? Uh, uh, yes, we did. and. Uh... There was a uh, no change in the solution. Actually, uh, the results were compared for uh, fully unsupervised learning, and with all the data missing. For example, the results of fully unsupervised learning were compared with twenty percent of data missing, and then they were compared with the CFD data. So we we didn't observe any any divergence or any deviation. Okay, if that's not the case, then let's uh, thank the speaker again. Yeah, thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Indok so from Seoul National University. I'm uh, now a PhD student. And today I'm gonna talk about the physics-informed uh, interface compression term in two-dimensional vo volume of fluid advection problem using neural network. Here is my contents. And I'll talk about first uh, background first. Now, uh, while solve the multiphase problem using uh, computational fluid dynamics, uh, capturing sharp interface between gas and liquid is closely related to stability and accuracy of the solution. And uh, as you know, the volume of fluid is the, one of the most widely used multiphase technique. And in the volume of fluid method, uh, we solve the volume fraction transport equation. When solving the equation, transport equation, numerical diffusion Often, almost uh, uh, often occurs actively near the phase interface. So it is very important to suppress such numerical diffusion effectively. The method to remove the numerical diffusion in open form 
uh, in open form, we use uh, interface compression method. In the interface compression method, we, ass uh, we assume the relative velocity direction is normal to the interface. So the relative velocity can act like uh, suppress the, the numerical diffusion. And the compression, the degree of the compression is determined by the compression coefficient. These are small compression coefficients. Uh, the numerical diffusion is removed well, uh, uh, is not removed well, so the uh, smeared volume fraction distribution is observed. However, uh, by uh, with the large compression coefficient, uh, we can estimate the sharp interface. However, the non-physical interface oscillation is observed in some computational domain. So to estimate the sharp interface, there are several previous studies. Uh, one is a uh, coupled level set with volume of fluid method. Uh, but Abi uh, proposed a simple coupled level set with volume of fluid method. And the method is implemented in the open form. And it shows good method conservation and better uh, estimating surface curvature. However, it has uh, uh, some drawback. Uh, its complexity and the computational cost is a drawback of the method. While the numerical diffusion is depend, uh, numerical diffusion depends on the uh, local flow characteristic. The conventional compression method uh, uh, set the compression coefficient equal to the entire comp entire computational domain. So the Lee and we proposed the dynamic interface compression method, uh, a method in which the interface compression coefficient changes according to the local flow characteristic. It is very easy to implement and it suppress the numerical diffusion efficiently. However, the ambiguity of the formula is the one of the most well-known problem of the method. The last previous study is the study about uh, uh, the, the ISO vector. ISO vector exploits an ISO surface concept for modeling the interface in geometric surface reconstruction step. It shows better boundedness and sharpness. However, just like the coupled level set with volume of fluid method, its complexity and computational cost is the uh, main advantage of the method. Uh, in volume of fluid method, volume fraction transport equation is solved. The transport equation is derived from continuity equations of liquid and gas. And while combining the uh, uh, continuity equations of liquid and gas mathematically, Excuse the compression me. term Sorry to interrupt. We don't see the presentation in uh, uh, the online uh, attendees. We don't see it. Uh, while combining the continuity equations of liquid and gas, the interface compression term with a relative velocity is rem uh, remains, and the relative velocity corresponding uh, corresponding the velocity of liquid and gas. Uh, uh, it cannot be defined in the volume of fluid method because in the volume of fluid method. The transport equation of the liquid and gas is not solved separately. So in the compression method in open form, the relative velocity uh, is assumed as the normal direction to the phase interface, just like the uh, formula in the slide. And here the C alpha means the interface compression coefficient, which I described earlier. And with a small value of compression coefficient, it can effectively suppress the numerical diffusion uh, occurring near the, the free surface. Uh, on the other hand, uh, with a large value of the compression coefficient, C alpha, uh, uh, we can estimate the free a sharp free surface. However, the non-physical oscillation due to, to uh, non-physical oscillation is observed due to the too strong compression effect. So it, when we use the compression coefficients, it is essential to properly select the compression coefficients which can only be found by trial error or the researcher's experience. Uh, so in my research, we uh, substituted, uh, we replaced the compression term to the machine uh, neural network and using a machine learning, train the, we trained the compression term to, uh, term to reflect the local flow characteristic. Especially we use uh, physics informed learning. Uh, there are two opposing concepts. One is a data-driven approach and the other is a physics-informed. A data-driven learning or data-driven modeling use a uh, lots of data set uh, to make the trained model to follow the tendency of the training data. However, the 
trained model cannot guarantee accuracy if it follows the data scope used for the training. Uh, on the other side, physics informed learning use uh, uh, training data, also the training data and the prerequisite physical or mathematical knowledge. Uh, so for example, it considered the uh, uh, governing equation or boundary conditions, so et cetera, in the training step. So you can overcome the extrapo extrapolation problem, which is uh, one of the most famous drawback of the data-driven learning. And here is the research object and the outline. Uh, we model the interface compression term using a physics-informed machine learning. Especially, uh, uh, we maintain the physical-based term involving fraction transport equation as much as possible. And we trained only the unknown relative velocity term and using a neural network. And uh, in my research, the operators to calculate known term and other numerical calculation are included in backpropagation process. And here's the research outline. Uh, first, we replace the interface compression flux in volume fraction transport equation using neural networks. Especially, we use a symbolic, in other words, the readable new neural network structure. And to train the neural network, we use mblox learner, which uh, structure is uh, similar with a recurrent neural network for long-term prediction. And the, finally, the physics-informed train, training strat strategy is applied to a uh, simple volume of fluid advection problem. Uh, the equation on the slide is the discretized volume, volume fraction transport equation. And here the phi relative means the relative flux in the compression term. And we replaced that uh, compression flux to the neural network. For the neural network's input, the following physical quantities such as volume fraction or vol uh, first, and first and second derivative of volume fraction and phase flux and so on are used, in the, uh, used for as the input of the neural network. And in the transport equation, a temporal derivative term and convection term is a known term. On, among the known terms, the convection term is implicitly implemented using the Urban scheme. And the reason why I use the Urban scheme is that in the Mule's algorithm in the open, in open form also discretize the convection term using an Urban scheme. And unlike the convection term, the interface compression terms estimated by neural network is explicitly implemented. And here is the architecture of the delta T block. Uh, delta T block is the minimum module to train the neural network, artificial neural network. And it, pretty, it predicts a volume fraction of the next time step using a previous one. Uh, the, del the delta T block it consists of a feature extraction and artificial neural network and numerical module. Uh, in the feature extraction mode step, uh, uh, the input of the artificial neural network is extracted from the field values. And the field, uh, the, the extraction process calculated by uh, multiplying matrix operators so that the process could be involved in the backpropagation process. And artificial neural network calculates the compression, compression flux using the inputs calculated in the feature extraction step. And finally, the numerical module solves the matrix equation of volume fraction transport equation and estimate the volume fraction of the next time step. And uh, if we use a, delta, a single delta T block, uh, there is uh, one main problem. Uh, when we use a, del a single delta T block, it means uh, training is performed between a single time step. So in other words, a long-term prediction cannot be guaranteed. So in this research, we connect delta, multiple delta T blocks continuously and perform training uh, using volume fraction of multiple time steps for long-term prediction. And the basic concept of the delta, uh, multiple N block is shown in the below. And training is performed using the average mean square error values calculated at each time step. If we're talking about the uh, symbolic neural network structure, uh, general structure of artificial neural network is shown just like the figure on the below, the figure at the below. Uh, basically, artificial neural network means uh, multiple um, multi-layer perceptrons, and the multi-layer perceptrons consists of an input layer, an output layer, and several hidden layers. 
Each layer consists of multiple uh, perceptrons and the perceptron receives the output from the previous layer as input. And uh, uh, every perceptron uses our uh, activation function and various activation functions such as sigmoid function, value, um, et cetera, are used. In general, general artificial neural network use a complex connection and deep structure and activation function for nonlinearity. However, in this research, we use a symbolic, in other words, readable neural network structure for nonlinearity, which is proposed by the previous study of Long. Uh, the reason why we use a symbolic neural network is that a uh, general artificial neural network is a black box model in which the relation between input and output is unknown. However, the symbolic neural network, a symbolic neural network, uh, 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 symbolic neural network can calculate the output value, and the output value is, is expressed as a high order polynomial of the input value. So it do not use the activation function, and by the such uh, distinct structure, uh, its nonlinearity can be preserved by such uh, distinct structure. And I, I apply such training strategy to the uh, one-dimensional volume of fluid advection problem. The liquid is partially filled in the one-dimensional computational domain. And the uh, uh, CFL number is set to uh, the value less than a one. And of course, excessive numerical diff diffusion occurs near the phase interface, just like the figure below because the compression term is not considered and the convection term is discretized by the first order of the scheme. And here is the training results using our M blocks in one dimensional problem. Uh, the figure below shows the training results according to the uh, uh, training results applying the one block, five blocks, 10 blocks and 15 blocks and 12 blocks in order. The loss converts well during training for the 5,000 epics as the training progresses, the neural network is trained to compress the interface. And as we found that as the number of connected delta T block increases, it can be seen that uh, numerical diffusion is more effectively suppressed. However, the results using the compression term trained by a single delta T block seems to be the best. Uh, it, is, uh, it is not right because the numerical diffusion hardly occurs in a single time step. So there, it means uh, there is nothing to be trained. And I apply the trained compression term to the one dimensional, both result, uh, one dimensional problem for uh, the, the entire computational time. And the figure on the left is the exact solution of the problem. And the figure of the right is the uh, results when applying the uh, one block and five blocks, 10 blocks and 12 blocks trainer. When the compression term uh, uh, trained by one block and five blocks is applied, numerical diffusion actively occurs at the computational time passes. Uh, in other words, it means the no long, uh, long term prediction is not guaranteed if we use a, a small number of uh, uh, use uh, one block or five blocks. However, the results with the model trained by 10 blocks and 12 blocks show good agreement with the exact solution for the entire time. And it means a long-term prediction is guaranteed. And uh, we've, we checked that the, uh, our training strategy shows a fair good agreement with the in one dimensional problem. We also apply the um, a process to the two dimensional volume of fluid advection problem. Uh, the rudiments advection problem is used in two dimensional problem and the test check how much the distribution, how much the distribution of volume fraction maintains its initial shape uh, after being transported due to the flow field. And all the result is calculated by the open form. And even when the high resolution scheme such as um, 6M H3 is used, the numerical diffusion occurs excessively in such case, in some cases. And the figure at the second row and third row are the a result when the conventional interface compression method is applied. And in most cases, uh, uh, the numerical diffusion is suppressed strongly. However, the phase interface tends to oscillate non-physically. 
And here is the training results using M blocks in 2D problem. And training is performed using 15 blocks because of a uh, uh, memory issue. If the uh, interface compression term is not applied, is, uh, excessive numerical diffusion occurs at the interface. And the figure below is the uh, training result. And training is performed about 10,000 epics. As training progresses, the model learns the way how to capture more accurate phase interface step by step. And after that, I apply the trained compression term to the entire computational time. Uh, the figure on the left is a, a result without the compression method. Uh, with, without the compression method, numerical diffusion is actively observed near the interface. And the figure on the middle is the uh, result with the conventional compression method is applied. Uh, with the conventional compression method, numerical diffusion is fairly suppressed. However, the interface shows non-physical oscillation. And the figure on the right is the uh, result when used, uh, using, used the trained compression model by MBLAP. The numerical diffusion near the phase interface is strongly suppressed and also accurately maintain the initial distribution of the volume fraction. And here is the conclusion. Uh, we perform a physics informed learning for the interface compression flux in volume fraction transport equation. And we keep physically or mathematically derived term as much as possible. And we use a symbol in neural network for readability or readability. And training is performed by including mathematical operators using feature extraction and numerical module. And finally, uh, uh, and uh, we use a recurrent M block structure for long-term prediction. After that, we apply the trained compression model to a simple advection problem. And we found that it, may, it can maintain the initial volume fraction distribution well. And it means it if effectively suppressed the numerical diffusion and captured a sharp interface and also avoid the non-physical oscillation. And we found that the more delta T blocks connected, the more accurately the interface is captured. And in other words, a small number of blocks shows a valid solution only for the short time interval, but long-term prediction is not guaranteed. And I'll talk about uh, some future work. Uh, we only use a single data set for training and validation. And it means the results, uh, result, result of the presentation is overfitted. So they may show a high accuracy. So in the near future, uh, we will use uh, various training data sets. So, and our ultimate goal is to find the general, general form of the compression term in polynomial. And there are some issues to be addressed. addressed. And one is a study on the structure of sim symbol in neural network. Uh, the relative flux in conventional interface compression method includes division operator and dot products and so on. However, the symbol in neural network only gives the result of the multiplication of the scala input values. So it cannot uh, calculate such complex operator or uh, complex uh, calculation. So uh, the so the new type of the uh, new structure of the symbol in neural network has, has, has to be developed to deal with such problem. And the another, pro another problem is the uh, normalization problem. In general, the input value should be normalized for the training efficiency. However, in this research, such a normalization step is not used because uh, they have no physical meanings. So currently we use a non-dimensionalized step when we uh, calculate the input values of the neural network. However, additional research uh, needs to be analyzed whether the method is correct. Yeah, this is my end of the presentation. And if you have any question, please. All right, thank you very much. Are there any questions from the audience? Uh, you mean, uh, yeah, yeah. You mean the what kind of input parameter? Are you?
uh, I training the C alpha value. Uh, I training the U relative value, and the input of the neural network is a uh, volume fraction and first and second derivative of the volume fraction, and uh, surface normal vector and phase flux. I use the that thing for the input. Okay. Uh, so, uh, yeah. 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 Is is the only 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 parameter I consider and it's my choice. It's, it, it's, for, it's, it's just my own choice. Yeah. You mean the what framework is needed to train the such compression time? Yeah, the, the test, for example, like rate propagation might compress time frame. Yeah. Right. So what do I need to do? I need to run the simulation. Yeah. So then on the running simulation, I need to train the network. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, I use a, a TensorFlow C++ API and use the Open Form version seven, and I build a TensorFlow C++ API and link with it with the Open Form. So. Uh, the all the code is can operated in simple library in simple code. So if you want to use such framework, you should have to uh, build a, a TensorFlow simple API and open form. Only it is used. It, only they are used. In. I think the question was more about yeah. you know the workflow if you actually want to use the network for a practical uh, application rather than for tools. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, the reason why I use a symbol in your network is that uh, to find the uh, uh, here, maybe I'm showing here, uh, the symbol in your network calculate the output values uh, using a, 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 a expressed a, a high order polynomial of the input values. So if the training is done well, we can find such a polynomial, such formula of the uh, how the relative velocity is calculated so uh, if the training is done well then you uh, so you just used some that compression formula in your simulation and it, i think it will give you a better result yeah. 